Oh no, surprise breach. With a presentation of breach, you can see that most babies are going to be frank breach. Um, that's 65%. Um, and that's when the baby's hips um, are flexed, but the knee joints are extended. This is going to mimic more of a cephalic, well, flex cephalic presentation. Uh, for the complete breach, that's going to be 10%, and that's when both the hips and knees are flexed. Um, and then incomplete breach would be either footling or kneeling, um, so you have um, some type of flexion um, or an extension in the legs. With the cord prolapse rate, you can see that on the bottom. With the frank breach, it's going to be about 2% cord prolapse, and the reason for that is you're going to have less likeliness for the cord to slip beyond the um, position because every the legs are extended up, but the hips are well flexed. Um, you're going to see that incidence go up for cord prolapse when you get to complete breach because there's more room. The baby doesn't get in the pelvis quite the same way when the knees are bent down. Um, and then footling and kneeling, so that incomplete breach, the risk is going to be much higher, um, anywhere between 10 and 25% for a cord prolapse. So that's our big concern with breach presentations. Overall, we see about a 3 to 4% incidence. Um, when we are looking at how to position them, the sacrum is going to be our denominator. And here for attitude, that's going to be everything. So for a cephalic presentation, there's only really two regions that we need to worry about, the, the head and the shoulders. But with breech presentations, we have the lower extremities, the upper extremities, and also the head. So you have three regions that may need maneuvering for during delivery. So risk factors, any fetal issues, so um, multiples, hydrocephaly, anencephaly, any fetal anomal anomalies, fetal death in utero, or short cord could be reasons, and maternal could be some variation in the pelvis, either um, increased fluid or low fluid, um, any uterine variation, so this is where maybe a fibroid could um, be that you might, or even a... Um, a bicornate uterus, hyperity, and placenta brevia. Um, risks are to the baby. Um, so there's a risk of head entrapment. So maybe the, the hips and the shoulders fit through, but the head is too large to fit through the pelvis, or maybe it deflexes. So it's like a relative um, poor fit, not an absolute. You could also have physical damage to the baby at birth, comorbidities, so preterm, poly, ollie, all those things could play in um, to risk for the baby. Any cord compression or prolapse, neurological deficits, um, even spinal cord injuries, and ultimately death is um, going to be the worst case scenario. So management for a breach, immediate recognition of the breach would be activate EMS. Um, we're going to stay calm and um, we're going to inform the birth team um, and we're going to empty the bladder with a catheter if the mom can't empty her own bladder. So we want m as much room as possible in that part of the pelvis. Um, we're immediately going to confirm dilation and we're going to avoid any pushing unless she's spontaneously pushing or birth is em imminent. Okay. Um, so we're going to instruct the assistant um, if we do feel that birth is imminent and the baby's coming, the assistant is going to assist us in maneuvers. We're also going to prepare for postpartum hemorrhage and resuscitation. Um, we're always going to transfer if we can. So we're never going to decline the transfer unless a baby is coming out. Um, so even in the second stage um, where there's full dilation, uh, we're going to position the mom in hands and knees. If the baby's, the birth isn't imminent, we're still going to go into the hospital, okay? So if birth is imminent, mom is spontaneously pushing, um, babies we're seeing presenting buttocks, we're going to put the mom to the edge of the bed, um, 
Um, and this, uh, the reason I'm teaching that position, you're going to see that we're going to talk about an OB complications. I want to make note that many breech births can be delivered in sideline, hands and knees. Um, you know, you'll see midwives and physicians around the world that are comfortable with breech that do breech deliveries. Um, aren't going to be as concerned about maternal position, but because we're rarely ever going to deliver a breech vaginally unless it's a surprise, I want you to be able to remember one way to do it, okay? So if the baby's coming, we're going to encourage pushing with contractions. Um, usually after the buttocks, the hips are going to birth in an anterior posterior um, diameter sequentially so one hip will come um, one side of the hip will come and then the other um, we're gonna st always stay hands-off if we can we're only gonna be hands-on if um, there is a arrest and descent um, and this is so that we don't cause extension of the baby we want the baby to remain well flexed um, when the baby gets, when the delivery gets to the umbilicus, um, this is when we know that the head is now engaged in the pelvis. So the same idea for cord prolapse um, applies here. So we have the butt is out, the baby is birthed all the way to the umbilicus. We know that the head is resting in the pelvis and that cord is ex extending up into the uterus to the placenta. So we need to assume that the cord is being compressed when the birth is to the umbilicus of the baby. Okay, so just the same for cord prolapse. We have about four minutes to for the, the rest of the baby's body to deliver before we have any kind of poor um, outcome from lack of oxygen from compression of the cord. It's controversial whether you need to draw a loop of cord down, but if you feel like there's a lot of tension with the cord pulling up, you may gingerly feel it and pull it down again. There's two schools of thought for this. Um, if the baby tries to rotate out of that sacral anterior position, which is optimal, we're going to gently guide the baby back using our using a um, towel or something to um, hold the baby. Okay, and the feet should spring free as soon as the baby continues to descend. But if not, you would employ um, maneuvers to deliver the legs. Okay, so we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, we're going to cover the baby's body with a warm towel. And then again, the arms should birth easily if they're crossed in front of the chest. So, um, but if they're extended, you're going to see that we may need to employ arm maneuvers to release the shoulders. They typically birth in the AP diameter the same way the hips did, and then they'll go back to that sacral, sacral anterior position. Um, once the hairline is visible, um, there's also do we do we support the baby or do, does the baby hang? So we're going to learn both in OB complications. Um, if we feel that the baby's head isn't coming, that's where our assistant could apply super pubic pressure, just the you know right above the pubic bone to help aid flexion of the head. And then if the head's not coming, there are also some um, management maneuvers to help deliver the head. Hands off is always going to be our best course of action, again, unless there's some type of delay in descent. We're going to briefly talk about the different maneuvers to deliver those three regions of the body if it was an indication. So the maneuver for the trunk and legs um, would be the Pinard move maneuver. For the arms and shoulders would be the loaf set. And I remember it like your arms hug, so love. That's how I remember that one. And then for the head is the Marceau Smelly Vite or the modified Marceau Smel Smelly Vite maneuver. MSV is what we're going to call it from here on out. Again, we'd only use these if it was indicated. So hands off approach is our best um, approach and that's going to promote flexion. We know that babies, if they startle, they extend. So we don't want to cause any stimulation to the baby if possible. So we're going to keep the baby warm and supported. Um, with episiotomy, um, we could do that. Um, if we need to perform any maneuvers, um, it's not typically required. Um, 
but we wouldn't want to do it until the baby's anus is visible at the introitus. Again, the same kind of idea that we don't want to do it too soon because it's going to increase maternal blood loss. Now, another thing to note, we talked about meconium. If we see frank meconium after rupture of membranes or any time during labor coming out of the vagina, we need to assess um, for breech presentation. But it's a normal finding as the baby's coming through the birth canal if it is in a breech position. Um, sometimes the presenting part, if it's a male fetus, um, you might have a penis and testicles that present first and they can get really swollen. Just to, just to note that.